Welcome to H20. Welcome to uh, Special Relativity. And let me start by wishing you all a Happy New Year. Uh, Happy New Year 2021. I'm pretty sure this is going to be an exciting year with a lot of changes ahead and a lot of exciting events. My name is Markus Kluter and I will guide you through this IAP lecture uh, on special relativity. Um, this is very likely uh, my favorite class at MIT. Um, A, because it's IAP and uh, we start a new year. Uh, there's a lot of excitement in the air and um, we have a chance to focus for this one month of January uh, on this specific subject. Um, B, um, I have a chance to introduce a man, Albert Einstein, um, through the discussion of his physics, uh, through a discussion of him as a person, and also uh, through a discussion of the historic context in which he developed special relativity. And see, if this is the first time you encountered special relativity, it will blow your mind. And it actually is quite fun as an instructor to, you know, do a little bit of a transformation in your understanding on, on physics. So let's get started um, with a quote, with an Einstein quote. I have a number of those as we go through the class. Um, this one here is really, you know, kind of the theme of the class. Um, let me just read this to you. It is not the result of scientific research that enables humans and enriches their nature, but the struggle to understand while performing creative and open-minded intellectual work. Um, it is really, you know, the struggle with the ideas, the, really the trying to get understanding which ennobles humans and enriches their natures. And let me add here um, that through your own work, um, through your own mind, you can transform yourself um, and, and your understanding of physics in general. This first video and this first lecture will mostly be concerned with organizational uh, topics. So I'll lay out uh, the, the schedule of the class and also how you get a grade, uh, what kind of p-sets we have in mind and so on. Let's get started. So I introduced myself already. Again, Markus Kluter. You can reach me by email at kluter at mit.edu. We have a graduate TA, Justin. Uh, his email is given on the slide as well. And then we have two graders and TAs, Mohit, Zach, Yuhin, and uh, Stephen. Those four will guide us through the class as well. And especially when we go into breakout rooms in the live class, they will help you uh, in, in the discussion. The class hours are from 3 to 4.30 p.m. on Zoom. Um, and you can, you know, I encourage you to, to join the class, to uh, participate, to be active in the class. But you will also be able to get to the material through recordings. I will not record the live class because I want to encourage you to be just as open as possible. But I pre-record the class and after the class time is over, I'll upload those uh, videos um, for, your, for your reference. And also if you live in a different time zone, you have a chance to listen to the class. Office hours will be Tuesday at 9 a.m. and Friday at 5 a.m. Tuesday you reach me and Friday you reach Justin. We will set up a Slack workspace, which uh, we use for our internal discussions um, with, the, with the teaching staff, but um, there's also going to be channels for you to discuss PSETs, there's channels for you to discuss the physics, and there's going to be a channel which um, will be important when we go to the, to the exam discussion. Um, the expectation is that you spend about 30 hours a week uh, during IIP, uh, some will find the PSATs very straightforward and quickly to do. Others will need more time. So it's just, a, it's not a, you know, don't set your stopwatch for 30 hours. That's a, just an average guide. Um, I will evaluate you at the end of the term. Um, and I will use this, this metric here. 50% of your grade will come from the homework. There's going to be five different homework assignments. There's going to be two midterms with 15% each. And one final is 20%. If I do the math correctly, this should lead us to 100%. Uh, you earn an A with 90%, a B with 75%, a C with 60% or higher, a D with 50% or higher, and a failing grade with less than 50%. So all lectures will be on Zoom. You find the Zoom links on the Canvas page, and uh, you probably found this already. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to find this video. 
And again, as I was saying, the recordings will be available after class. This is the schedule. Um, let me start by uh, explaining this picture. There's uh, little Thomas here and then a, a German ICE train. Um, this class, the way I look at this class is as a, it's a, it's a, you know, a, a, a train which is just leaving the station right now. And it will you know, very slowly pick up space, um, um, pace. Um, but you want to make sure that you stay on the train and you don't jump off because you know, it, this will, when it, once it's picked up its pace, will be a fast moving train. And uh, missing a few days in IAP uh, will cause you to have trouble following along with the material. Um, we'll start today with this introduction. Um, tomorrow we have a very interesting uh, lecture by David Kaiser. This is the only one where we actually record the live, uh, live event. So we will record the Zoom session um, and then the rest will uh, unfold, I was about to say. You find this red block here. Those are our midterms and the final. Uh, on those days, there's not going to be a live class but I will make the uh, final, uh, sorry, the, the exam available um, for about 24 hours. Um, you should not spend more than an hour, maybe an hour and a half on, on, on the exam and then submit once you're done. Um, the, the exams are um, open book in a sense that you can look at the textbooks and you can look at the course material, but you are not supposed to you know, do an online search for the solutions and you're also not supposed to discuss with your uh, peers. Um, you can ask the clarifying question on one of the Slack channels um, and we will be happy to answer as, as quickly as we see them. Uh, but again, this is a, an evaluation of your own performance and you should submit your own performance. The P sets are different in a sense that I encourage that you guys you know, build small groups and work on them together. Um, each piece that then has to be submitted by uh, you as an individual, meaning that I don't want to see copies of piece sets of other folks. I want your own answers in your own words to the questions we first. Um, very important day in, in January is Martin Luther King Day. Uh, in IAP, it gives, gives us all a, a little bit of a breathing room, an extra free day. Uh, and you see that you know the, there's going to be um, after the discussion at the very end, after the final, a special lecture where I introduce the topic of general relativity, um, which is not par part of the core content of, a special, of this special relativity class. Textbooks. Um, I will not really follow the textbooks line by line or chapter by chapter, but I encourage you and I give you an outline and to read them, especially the first two one. The first one is by French, the second one is by Resnick. Um, the, former, the first one is a former MIT professor. Um, you are supposed to read this book cover to cover and I give reading assignments on this. Uh, Resnick has a lot of good examples and problems and we will focus on the first four chapters of that book. There is a lot of literature out there on special relativity. There's a, a slew of textbooks available. If you have one at hand, you can also use that and find the, the relevant chapter in there. Um, I give you one extra book here, which is nice because it is um, an excellent um, explanation of the mathematics involved. If you're more inclined um, to course, course 18, that might be an interesting textbook for you. Again, there's many, many resources on the topic of special relativity and I've point out a few as we go. In addition to the textbooks, I give you a number of papers. For example, the paper in which Einstein explains or describes the concept of the theory of special relativity. And there's a few others which I'd like you to read. They're interesting because they, they introduce the, the physics, but they're also interesting as they have been written more than a hundred years ago in a slightly different language than we would be using today. And Einstein specifically doesn't even write papers the way other people wrote papers at the time. He had, he had his own style on writing papers and we will see that. So here's the reading assignment week by week. Uh, we, you know, we start in week one by Resnick chapter one, French chapter two. There's two papers, the Michelson-Morley paper and the Einstein paper on special relativity. And then we go on um, as we go through IAP. The homework schedule is here. Um, I hand out PSET number zero today um, and I'll explain it on the next page. Um, this 
is a PSET which allows, I mean, this is a PSET which will keep you busy uh, for the entire month or most of it. Um, the other PSETs are uh, shorter uh, and they are more pointed in, you know, you get the PSET, you work on it and you hand in the solution. And by the time you have done that, the next PSET rolls around. I would use the PSET load a little bit because I want to acknowledge the fact that it will be harder for you to work in teams. I still encourage this. Uh, you, you find yourself on Slack, you find yourself on, on Zoom channel. Some of you might um, have housing together. Um, I really encourage you guys to discuss the physics. There are some really difficult concepts um, which just need you to think through and to talk through. And the talking through best happens with your peers. And you will see that that will be very beneficial, especially when it comes to the PSAT. So here's homework number one. Um, I've done this now a few times, and I really, really enjoy the uh, solutions given by the students. Um, so this is a creative project. Um, you know, the, you have basically all, almost all of IIP to hand it in, and the idea is to be creative around a topic relating Einstein or and the special uh, the um, theory of special relativity. The project might be a video, it might be a poem, it might be a musical piece, artwork, animations, a, a game, uh, a structure, um, you name it. Um, what I really want is that you take something you do very well and combine it with the topic of this class. Um, I want you to take something where you are very familiar with, um, where you are feeling comfortable, and then enter this new topic, this new topic of special relativity. Um, I will rate it based on your creativity, on the quality, and on your effort. Um, and again, please send this in by January 22nd. I really encourage you to not wait to the last minute to start working on this. Those topics, those creative projects, they always take a little bit more time than you might expect. This class will have an interactive component and um, we will use breakout rooms for discussions and uh, smaller program, programs as you would be doing in the classroom as well. Here is the very first one. Um, what people who are taking this class asynchronously, I encourage you to stop here and work through the problem and then look at the solution afterwards or look at the discussion of the solution afterwards. So this first Gedanken experiment, thought experiment, is about the topic of relativity. And, you know, the, you, you, <clears throat> you want to first understand what that is before you, dis or what relativity is before you discuss what a special relativity is. <clears throat> so imagine, you wake up inside a room with no windows and uh, one locked door you checked. You make sure that the door is locked, you cannot get out. You cannot see outside. Looking out around, you see a table with a number of items on it. There's a desk lamp plugged in and turned on. There's a tennis ball, there's a bunch of string, there's a pitcher of water, there's a cup, there's a candle, there's a box of matches, and there's a music player with headphones. A skateboard and a wooden stool are also in the room. The music player has a sign on it saying, turn it on for instructions. So you do. You're told that you are in a special, specially designed vibration proof and noise proof train car, <coughs> sorry, on a set of straight and level train tracks. Your task is to use one or more of the items in the room perhaps in combination with each other to determine whether the, the train car is stationary or is moving on the tracks. There's a 30 minute time limit on your test or tests and you cannot destroy or you cannot modify the walls or the floors or the seating of the car. That is not permitted. Um, so the question to you is, can you think of some creative way to use the items that might indicate whether or not you're moving? Think about this and discuss in your breakout rooms. That is for the live session here. Again, I wanna encourage you to stop and to think about a solution. Can you think about a creative way to work with this? 
the typical time is about 10 minutes. You might want to think about it. You might want to take some notes. All right. The answer is you cannot figure it out. Every reference frame by itself um, is, is uh, inert. You cannot figure out whether or not you are in a moving or in a, in a stationary reference frame. And as long as you cannot feel vibrations or you hear the sound or you have some other internal external indication, you will not be able to figure out whether or not the room is moving with a constant velocity. You will be able to feel or measure accelerations. And so now you could argue that, you know, the, since the train track is on Earth and the Earth is actually, uh, since, since you're on, uh, on Earth and if you're moving, you would be able to, to feel the rotation of the Earth, there might be a way to figure this out, um, but that will be very, very hard to do. So the answer is you cannot. You cannot distinguish one reference frame from another. You don't know what an absolute velocity is. So <clears throat> another way we will interact in this class is the concept questions. So here, concept questions are meant to you know, give you a little bit of a checkpoint to encourage you to think about what I just explained in a video or in the class and to stimulate some sort of discussion. Sometimes you will use concept questions in breakout rooms for the discussion part. Uh, sometimes we'll just use room features in order to figure out what um, the answer is. But besides the technology, those concept questions are really for you to figure out whether or not you did just understand the concept. Um, so again, I encourage you to, you know, pause the video to think about the concept question and then move on with the answer. Here's an example. Um, a new Star Wars movie came out, um, 2019, and I asked you to pick the answer closest to your level of Star Wars, Star Wars expertise. I saw the movie and I consider myself a Star Wars fan. I saw the new movie, but I do not know much about Star Wars. I heard about Star Wars, but I didn't see the movie yet. Always liked Star Trek better. What? Star Wars? Okay. so. Very straightforward. Here I would give you an option one, two, three, or four. You collect the answers and we get some feedback. This is obviously, there's no right answer here. There can be concept questions where there is a right and the wrong answer. And again, for you, this is supposed to give you feedback on how well you understood the concept. All right, before we close this first video, I want to introduce players, um, Alice and Bob. We will have um, often discussions of reference frames. Uh, typically, Alice or Bob are in one reference frame, and then the other person is in the other reference frame. I want you to think about those Star Trek um, figures. Um, we will use um, spacecrafts. We will use light, uh, so phasers or light pistols, um, in order to um, demonstrate the impact of special relativity to understand, understand the concepts.